Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. Technology is creating opportunities in the commercial real estate industry at an increasingly rapid pace. Technology-fueled innovations are enabling those forward-thinking firms to reduce back office costs and risk, raise equity faster, and increase asset performance so that they can focus more time on activities that drive revenue. Today, IMS is the most widely adopted investor management software for commercial real estate firms. Visit us at investormanagementservices.com. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Mike Hambright. Thanks for being on the show, Mike. Hey, Whitney. Happy to be here. I, I was honored to be on the same stage as Mike a few months ago in Denver at uh, the real estate or at the Raising Money Summit uh, that's hosted by Adam Adams. I, I suggest you check it out. Uh, but uh, uh, Mike is a professional real estate investor. He's a mentor and coach. He's a founder and host of FlipNerd.com a real estate investing secrets show, a web-based video interview, as well as a podcast. Uh, Mike, you know, thanks again for your time to be on the show today. Would you give the listeners a little more about your background, um, you know, and, and how you got into this thing we call it, you know, real estate investing? Yeah, 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 this strange animal. Um, yeah, I've been a real estate investor for about 11 years now. So I left corporate America, um, you know, I, I kind of followed the path that I thought would would help me move ahead. I, I grew up in a in a family that you know, was uh, definitely working class. Um, and I just kind of knew I wanted more. And uh, I was the first, I was really the first person in my family to even go to college and ended up going to grad school as well. And I just, and the reason is I, I kept thinking that I needed more formal education, like somehow that would move me forward. And, and uh, you know, the short version of my story is I went into corporate America, had some level of success and then ended up working for a huge company, you know, multi-billion dollar company that it doesn't even exist anymore. It just, uh, you know, they just went away basically. And, um, and then went to work for another company that was flying high, kind of a startup, but flying high, doing really, really well or appeared to be. And then eventually they filed bankruptcy and it's like, man, I just, I have all this education. I have all this experience. I have all this successful track record, but I sure don't feel like I'm in control here. And, uh, and so that was my first foray kind of back that, that takes me to like 2008, where um, I'd always had an interest in real estate investing. And, you know, I'm, as you know, I'm primarily a single family house investor. I've flipped about 400 houses in uh, primarily in the Dallas Fort Worth market. And um, that kind of got me into, Hey, I just, I need to take, I need to take my family's financial future and my own sanity into my own hands without really knowing what that means. Uh, you know, I'd always been kind of entrepreneurial and ended up diving into real estate in 2008, which was when the market was going down, of course. And, everybody thought I was crazy. And uh, truthfully, it was a great time to get in. And it was just coincidence. Like I didn't plan that it just kind of happened. And in hindsight, it's like, I'd love to have a 2008 back. But, uh, but yeah, so um, that was really how I got kind of started. And it's just grown from there from investing myself to coaching and mentoring other people to starting the podcast and, and a number of other shiny objects that have uh, uh, attracted my attention over the years. Awesome. Uh, Mike, you know, before, before, obviously, before we started recording, you, you and I were talking about uh, just the, the importance of uh, networking and building our network and, and just how important those relationships are, uh, you know, in, in this business. And, and uh, it's going to be a great place to focus. I, I would like for you to just elaborate and us just kind of go through, uh, sure. you know, increasing our network because obviously a lot of the listeners that are just getting started. Uh, I mean, it's hard to, to go up and talk to people and increase our network when we have no experience or uh, we've never done a syndication before. And, uh, and I know you are, you've been in the business long enough. You can, you can help us in that. Yeah. It's kind of funny. It's a funny thing now. I mean, it's easy to look back and say, Hey, I, I have a, people will probably look at me and say, well, yeah, it's easy for you because you have a lot of experience. Like, yeah, but I started with never flipping a house, never talking to a seller before, never knowing how to evaluate a deal, not knowing how to raise money, like all those things. And, 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 you know, there's this kind of saying of don't, don't judge somebody based on their first inning. You know, you don't compare somebody in the first inning to somebody that's in their seventh inning. Right. And it, and, and it's the same thing. Like you have to start somewhere. And I think, you know, when I talk about this subject, I, I usually tell people like, no matter how much you, how little you think, you know, you know, more than other people. 
And if you can find a way to add value and teach them and show them the way or help them get started or even just provide uh, an opportunity to have somebody to banter with, to talk about like, well, do you know a good resource for that? Or how do you do this? What does that word even mean? Whatever it might be is there's always people that are kind of further back in the progression than you. And if you can find a way to add value to those people, then one, it improves your network. But two, I've just found um, that coaching and mentoring has made me a better investor and a better person and a better business person. Because, you know, before you go tell somebody how to do something, um, you know, it forces you to think about it more than just, uh, than what you, you might, you might say, well, gosh, I, how do you do that? And it's like, well, I just do it. It's kind of second nature to me, but let me think about it. And then you start thinking about the steps and you're like, why do I do that? Why don't I do this instead of that? And next thing you know, you've, whatever you're talking about, you, you're better at it because you had to explain it to somebody else. And so, uh, anyway, in a roundabout way, I think it doesn't matter how much experience you have there's always people that know less than you. And if you can start to add value to them, it'll make you better. And you just kind of stair step your knowledge and your experience and your network from there. And it helped give you a little confidence too, right? If you, if you know yeah. you're a little bit more educated than someone else, or if you, if you already know going into the conversation that you can add some value, uh, you're going to be more confident. And I, I just find, I mean, right then you, you just, you stand different and, and you talk different when you have that little bit more confidence. Right. right? Yeah, um, no doubt. So when you, you know, when you were starting to build your network, what were some things you did to really uh, exponentially grow your network or your, uh, you know, your base of people in the business that you knew or investors sure. and that type of thing? Yeah, I think, um, you know, early on, I guess if I kind of go back even before real estate investing, I, I'd always put in a lot of emphasis on, I'd always, I've always been like a connector. Like I've always connected people. You really need to know this person or let me get you together with that person. And I've always been that type of person, but just didn't have the context of being an entrepreneur in business. And, um, you know, what happened is I think there's a little bit of a learning that happened for me in the business world. When I worked for this multi-billion dollar company that I, that I talked about, I felt like I was kind of a made man on the inside. And then I lost my job one day, I got fired. And uh, to be honest, and, and tens of thousands of people ended up getting fired, but I was kind of at the beginning of that. Uh, there's a little bit of a longer story to that, as you can imagine. We can talk about it another time, but you know, I left and the market was trending down. This was kind of 2007 ish, right? Things were starting to change a little bit. And I just felt like when I was on the inside and I had influence, like everybody wanted to be my friend and I could, I could do what I wanted. And then when I was on the outside, I was on the outside. Like there was nobody there to help me. And I just remember kind of thinking, feeling disappointed that I feel like I've always put emphasis on my network and it wasn't there to help me. Mm -hmm. And I think when I went into business for myself, eventually in the back of my mind, subconsciously, I'm, I'm like, I'm never going to let that happen again. I'm going to, and some of it might've been a little more shallow early on when I was in corporate America. A lot of those relationships are kind of shallow. Like you're there to help people, but there's always an ulterior motive and they have an ulterior motive. And it's just kind of how corporate America tends to work sometimes. <laughs> Of course, I'm talking about a company that doesn't exist anymore, so maybe that's part of the reason. But, um, but yeah, on the outside, I I, I think I, you just have to find ways, kind of what we we're saying, to add value to people. And I think as a self-employed person, as a real estate investor, one of the beauties of that is it's not it's not that I'm asking necessarily for a favor from somebody that doesn't have any benefit from it. It's to find ways to collaborate, and it's like. I can add value to you and you can add value to me. And we start to think about like more of a collaboration where everybody wins instead of this thing that's like, will you do me a favor? And well, I sure owe you one. And you know, so now it's more of finding ways to benefit the people that I work with and uh, you know, everybody wins at the same time. So do you have a, uh, maybe an example of, of recently how, you know, I don't know, you were building your network or ways you've done that, but then also how you've collaborated with people that you've met those networking. Events. Yeah. So a kind, of, kind of a common example now is that, um, I partner on deals with people. And so I have access to capital, uh, and I have contractors that have rehabbed hundreds of houses for me and I have those things. And sometimes now people that are looking to get started, we partner and they might find the deal, but they're kind of afraid of it. What do I, how am I going to get financing for it? What am I going to do? What if I screw the rehab up? And I, and then I say, well, look, I'll, we'll use my resources. You can learn along the way here's how we're, we can split the deal. And the value I add to you is, you know, I have cheaper capital 
my capital can be deployed tomorrow and uh, my contractor is a text message away and I'll help walk you through the whole process. So you'll learn and get better and more confident in the process. I win because I get to participate in the profits of the deal. They win because it might be a deal that they would eventually get scared of and not do if they didn't have some extreme handholding. And uh, so that's a common example like these days. Um, but even, you know, in my, uh, I guess my more coach, my coaching business and mentoring, I think there's a lot of things where I collaborate with people and we just kind of car, it's really, it's just more common in multifamily, right? We kind of carve up the deal. Like if you play this role, this is what you get and I can do this part and here's what I get. And you find ways to kind of carve up the deal. It's a little bit harder to do that with single family because the deals are smaller, but conceptually it's, it's really still the same. So what are some ways kind of outside the box uh, when you were starting to network, how you, how you grew your, uh, your contact list or, or yeah. how did you do that? Yeah. You know, so um, yeah, yeah. You, you see the gray hairs, don't you? Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things that I did early on, I'm actually doing one of these right now in Dallas and I hadn't done one for probably five or six years anyway. So I do this thing called rehab live and I, um, I basically, I, you know, at the time I started doing these, we were flipping five, six, seven houses at any given time. And so, and also back then I didn't have the relationship I have with my contractor now. Now we do a lot of stuff over text message and via smartphone. So I don't have to go there much. Um, but back then I would, you know, once a week, at least I'm on the circuit driving around checking on houses. How are they going? And I just said, well, why don't I just invite people to meet me there when I'm there. And so I started this thing called rehab live and I would basically have people come watch us rehab a house effectively. And so in my market, you know, for the most part, it would take us about a month to rehab a house. And I'd say, well, just come out three times right when we close on it or sometimes even right before come out when we have done nothing and you kind of see it in all its glory. And, you know, we buy distressed houses. So they usually are in need of repair. Sometimes they're hoarder houses, maybe fire damage. I would always pick like the worst house because it's the biggest transformation. And, but then, you know, come again in a couple of weeks when we're halfway through and then come again in a couple of weeks when we're done. And then we just literally would sit around the living room and talk about it. And we get like 30, 40, 50 people to show up to these things and just kind of help people understand why we're doing certain things or how we did this, how do we find the deal? And, um, and just really just kind of talk about it, you know, and it just gave people more confidence. And then in the process of that, people started to look to me as an expert, like you taught me something. And therefore I'm not saying that I ever, I ever thought that anybody owed me anything, but that's just how reciprocity works. Like you add value to somebody and then, some number of those people at some point will, uh, some opportunity will come my way. It could be a deal that they didn't want to deal with, or it could be, you know, people would ask like, do you, are, do you need any more private money? Cause I, I have money to lend or there's just things that kind of come out of it that truthfully, when I started, I didn't really know or what to expect. And so anyway, so I did a number of those in my market and really built up my relationships in, in this market, the Dallas Fort Worth market. And, uh, of course we have the podcast and all those things over the years here now, and I'm actually doing one of these rehab lives right now and, um, I'm doing it all virtually. So people are actually following me along, uh, to watch us do this all online. And we're just going over to the house once or twice a week and shooting some videos and talking about, uh, how we did this and how we got the deal and walking through the rehab estimate and things like that. So yeah, it just, it's kind of a, a little bit of a blast from the past, but that just happens to be something we're doing right now. Who is Vinny Smile Chopra? Came to the U.S. from India with $7 in his pocket, and today he has created a portfolio of over $200 million in commercial real estate. He's a CEO of five companies, acquiring and managing diverse multifamily portfolio of 3,500 units, and his team self-manage all the assets. Vinny has walked the walk with over 26 successful syndications during multiple economic cycles, including downturns over 12 years. He has built a very extensive educational academy to teach and mentor investors. Vinny, tell us about this multifamily syndication academy. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you so much. I'm really proud to really talk to everybody about this extensive multifamily academy that teaches new and sophisticated investors how to use other people's money through syndications. That has been my world. 
to buy apartments from 50 units to 500 units and how to select emerging markets, how to do deal analyzing, investor education, other people money, syndication blueprints, everything I have learned, I teach in this academy and over 500 lectures and also how to manage the assets also and along with lots of great templates and PowerPoints, everything. And I personally also mastermind coach all my students every Wednesday. So to reach me, Whitney, all the students have to, or investors have to just text the word learn, L-E-A-R-N, learn to 474747 or call my team at 925-766-3518. So, so tell me what kind of, uh, or how you're producing that. Is that Facebook live or is that something that's professionally videoed and you're editing no, it? And, no, that's or is a, it just like a, hold the cell phone up and. Yeah, exactly. I'm using my cell phone a couple. I've only done a couple of videos. So we're literally, we're just, we're just doing the demo right now. So it's, it's new, but, uh, yeah, I went over there the other day and I was just using my, my phone. And the first time a guy on my team went with me and he was recording it and couple of people, we had this opt-in video and truthfully a bunch of people are complaining. Well, this sounds really windy there. I was like, well, this isn't, this isn't, you know, this ain't HGTV. This is uh, me with a cell phone. Like I'm trying to pretend like you're standing next to me and it's just raw and I'm sorry it was windy that day, you know? But, uh, so we kind of told people, yeah, if you want the HGTV version that, uh, is full of BS, you know, you know where to find that at. <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, it's just, you start to take for granted and you do too. You know, I'm sure sometimes the things you do every day in the course of business are things that people can learn from and it just starts to become second nature of this is what I do on a daily or weekly basis. And sometimes we forget, and I want people that are listening to this, understand that too. Sometimes you forget that some, that's a learning opportunity for somebody else, a way for you to add value, even though you think, well, that's just like, I'm, all I'm doing is breathing. I don't even really think about it. And it's like, yeah, but some people don't know how to do that yet. No, I like that. I like that yeah. a lot. Um, definitely take it for granted. Take things for granted as you, as you grow and things that you started with, you kind of forget the struggles that you had yeah. uh, when you first started. Uh, but you know, what about, um, uh, Let's focus on the, those investors you were talking about. Uh, you know, now you, you can you can bring all that capital the next day. And, you know, obviously that's because your track record and you've been doing this uh, for a good while now. But uh, but initially you didn't have that, right? right? You know, and so you know, how did you go about building that investor database? You know, to the point that it is now. It's just one deal at a time. Like you just, it's kind of like anything in life. If you have stepping stones you know, you need to go a hundred miles away and it starts with one step, you know, and it's just those little things add up. And, um, I think, you know, if I had to do over again, I think we might've talked about this a little bit at the conference. It's just like little things you look back and say, Oh, I should, there's something I could do different to either add more value or when people, for example, when I used to do these rehab lives back then, I know we talked about, uh, this top, the general topic a little bit at the event we were at here uh, last uh, couple months back is uh, I would maybe send out an email and just have people email me back and I maybe put their names in a spreadsheet or something. It's like, well, now I, why don't I have them opt into an actual form and they're in my autoresponder and make sure that everybody opts in. I don't give out the address until they've opted in or something. And so there's just like little things you think about. And then over time, it's like, wow, two people signed up for my list today. And over the course of a year, it's like thousands, right? And so it's amazing how little crumbs add up to something much bigger in, in everything we do. Right. Hmm. So what kind of, um, you know, CRM and opt-in platform or software do you use now? Oh man. How, how long is the show again? Like <laughs> <laughs> we use uh, way too many things and, uh, uh, we, we use an infusion soft as our main kind of operation system. Okay. But for most people that are listening you don't need, you don't need that as to, to, it's like, a you know, a Ferrari for hauling manure. So, you know, it's a, you don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, and you know, we have a whole bunch of systems that we string together for our kind of info business, our coaching business and things like that. But, um, but yeah, a basic autoresponder, it can be a great thing. Um, if you have value to give, I mean, people are not going to give you their contact information unless you give them some value, uh, first. Sure. Sure. So what are, what are some techniques that you used when you were, you know, just doing the first few deals, uh, to keep, growing your, uh, specifically your investor base or, or increase, you know, just growing those relationships uh, with people that are lending or that's right with, with people yeah. who are like hard money lenders or investors in your deals. Yeah. So I, I historically use, I have a, a couple of, uh, um, 
private money that's kind of close to us, friend and family type money, and then some local banks. And in terms of, um, it's hard, it's, it's, it's hard for me to say, well, just go find a family member that has a bunch of money and you know, that's not going to add any value here to anybody. I'll kind of talk about the banking relationships a little bit. And this is the same even for private money is, um, once we had done a few deals, we started to create kind of a binder. Um, and it was like, a, it was almost like, a, um, what do you call it? A, uh, well, it's just a, a, basically a binder of our experience. Here, here are the deals. Here's how we found them. Here's what we paid for it. Here's how much profit we made on it. And when we started to network with banks and mind you, this was, you know, when we started talking to banks, it was like 2009. So there, most of them were like real estate. Now we don't do that anymore. You know, there's just, it was a bad time, but when we could show them, Hey, we've done 10 deals now, we've done 20 deals now. Here's every single one. I'm not leaving out the bad ones. Like these are all of them. And, uh, you know, the question was always, well, how did you find that deal? How did you get such a good deal on it? Cause we buy distressed houses direct from sellers is my model. So we market to them and we find leads, but it just, a lot of people are visual. And then of course, a lot of financial people are, uh, they want to see the financials. Right. And so instead of just saying, I bought it for this and I paid, I made, you know, here's how much money I made on it. It's like, here's, these are my detailed P and L's for each one. Let me kind of show you exactly what we put into it and how we made this money on it. And so that track record gives, it gives people a lot of confidence. Uh, the type of people that you want to talk to, it gives them confidence that you know what you're doing and the bigger and longer your track record, then the easier that gets. And, and then truthfully, and you, you probably know this and have experienced some of this as well. You go from nobody wants to lend you money to it's easier to raise money than it is to apply that money, right? Like you're like, I don't, I don't need all that money. I can't even put it to work right now. So let's keep talking. Can you just set it on the sidelines for me until we have another deal? <laughs> um, and so you go from kind of one extreme to the other. So Mike, what's a, what's a way that you've recently improved your business that we could apply to our business? Oh, wow. I would say one thing that I'm doing uh, a lot of now, and this was not always the case um, because I, I uh, like I said, I tend to get shiny object syndrome and I want to dive into something is, is constantly thinking about what I can cut out. And uh, for some people that know me relatively well, they're like, did Mike just say that? But that's the truth. I think a lot about um, simplifying things and making things easier. And I'm at a point in my business now where I have more opportunity than I have time and I have more opportunity than I have. Um, you know, there's some things that historically I would have said I'm all over that, but now it's like that just doesn't fit into my life. Like I don't, I still work hard, but I, at least I have control. And there are some things that I've done before where I would work hard and might have a lot of financial benefit, but I, it didn't feel like I was in control most of the time. And so, um, you know, I think uh, the lesson there for people is just kind of be true to yourself. There's a lot of ways to make money, uh, especially in this industry. And it doesn't mean that you have to do them all or that they, they jive with uh, who you are or what fits into your lifestyle, right? What's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? Uh, I'm not going to get any brownie points for this because she's not going to hear me say it, but I would say it's my wife. I mean, she definitely has kept me grounded and told me no when I needed to be told no. And, uh, she, she is, a lot of people don't, uh, don't, uh, know this, but she has been every bit a part of the business as much as I have. She's just more of the, the, uh, operations person on the backside. She's our kind of a CFO and handles all that stuff. And we kind of have this joke between us that if she had ever had to buy a house, we, she never would have bought one because she's too risk averse. And if I had to manage our cash flow and uh, finances and stuff, we, I would have just quit a long time ago. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd say my wife, she's my secret awesome. weapon. I, I can relate. I can yeah. relate to that. Um, uh, is there a, a need in your business right now that you'd like to put out to the listeners? Um, you know, I think we're always just trying to add value. If people want to kind of listen and follow along with, with our, with our shows and things like that. I mean, um, uh, that'd be, you know, one area that if, if anybody wants to follow along, we actually have a membership uh, site. So we, we track uh, people that are listening to our show and try to add value to them. And we put out a lot of uh, different training information, again, mostly single family related. We have about a hundred thousand uh, subscribers on our platform that we follow. And so, um, we found that, uh, you know, my general belief is the more the merrier. So 
and how do you like to give back? Uh, you know, I try to do it in, in terms of, uh, in terms of this industry you say, or yeah, anyway, anyway, yeah, at all. Yeah. You know, I think it's kind of consistent with what I've been talking about here. I, I, I like to teach. I mean, I think honestly, real estate investing has changed my life. And, um, and I, by every definition of financially free, like that, that's me now. Like I, I it's kind of funny. I haven't, I'm going to use this uh, little gimmick in a video here sometime soon, but, uh, like we live, we, tr we've fortunate, we're fortunate to travel a lot. There's a lot of things that we do in terms of enjoying our life because we've worked really hard for it, but we're not flashy. So I just bought this little, uh, Lamborghini, but it literally is about a, it's probably about an eight inch uh, replica, you know? So and I do this <laughs> joke about like, I finally made it now. The truth is, is I could buy a bunch of real ones, but I don't have any interest in that. I just, I just, that's not me. Right. So, um, so what I really like to do is just teach other people how to have those same, how to have those same freedoms, like how to get there. And, you know, I kind of tell everybody, I, there's no way that I could make you successful, but if you, if you, you know, you want to learn the fundamentals of how to get there, then I can teach you that. And it always comes back to the drive that people have, but, uh, but yeah, that's the biggest way that I would say I, I do. I try to give back through my platform is by helping other people get to that next level, whatever it is for them. Great, Mike. Uh, thank you again for being on the show and uh, tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Yeah, just uh, the best way is just to go to flipnerd.com. Uh, that's our main platform. And of course, I I'm probably uh, spend more time on social media than I should. So you can find me on uh, Facebook or Instagram as well. Um, and if anybody has any interest in following along with this uh, rehab that I mentioned we're doing here, you just go to flipnerd.com slash rehab. And that'll get you to the right place to kind of follow along. Even after the project is uh, done, we'll kind of make it evergreen where people can uh, kind of opt in and learn from that. So depending on when you're listening to this, it, it, it most likely will still be available one way or another. Great. Great. Thanks again, Mike. I really appreciate you being on the show. Appreciate the listeners being with us today and uh, hope you'll go to LifeBridge Capital and connect with me. Also go to our Facebook group where we can all learn from experts like Mike. And, and you can also leave questions for me that you want to ask, uh, want me to ask future guests, but also be sure to tune in tomorrow, subscribe, and we will talk to you later. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.